ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessing. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to increase us his blessing upon us and grant us his pleasure in dunya and hereafter. Allah Mahmoudi Abdul Alameen. We'll continue with the explanation of a beautiful booklet, Shaykh Ibn Baz al important lessons for every Muslim. And we started lesson 15 that was about التخلق للأخلاق المشروع. Beautifying your soul with the Beautiful character, prescribed character from the Prophet and the prescribed character from the the Sharia of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And we talked. Sheikh mentioned some of the characters, noble characters that a Muslim should have. Mentioned that who remembers a sidq, truthfulness. Then he mentioned al amana, being trustworthy. Then he mentioned al afaq meaning that the person will be chast, chastity. Person doesn't beg the people. Person has has uh, dignity and is chast. So he seeks to be independent of means. Allah will make him independent. The, the other character that we'll start tonight, inshallah, is a very great character. Actually, is the character of Islam. And that is al-haya, shyness, bashfulness. Modesty. Al haya or shyness is a great character trait and a noble attribute for every Muslim to beautify and adorn himself with. If the Muslim adorns himself with the haya and shyness, he will shield himself from all lowliness while achieving all beautiful, noble traits and characters. Al haya kulluhu khayr. Wal haya. As the Prophet said, shyness contains all good and it does not bring about anything else except good. If shyness is removed from a person, he will be devoid of good. And he will not be concerned with the evil or corruption he commits or even other commits. The Prophet informed us and said, إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستح فاصنع ما شئت. From the first speech of the prophets that reached the people is the first words that they used to say is if you feel no shyness, if you feel no shame, do as you wish. What does it mean? Does doesn't mean that or then you do whatever you want. No, meaning that if you have no shame. If you reach that point that nothing here or you care about anything, you have no shame, you're careless, then do whatever you want. Do as you wish. Because you know Allah is what is watching. But if you don't care about that, do as you wish. And the greatest form of shyness or being ashamed of doing something is to be shy from Rabbul Alameen. SubhanAllah, to be shy from the Lord of the, all that exists. خالق الكون أجبعي خالق المخلوقات the one the creator of all creation from shyness of Allah Azza wa Jal is not allowing him سبحانه وتعالى to see you doing what he has made haram and prohibited for you rather you must be shy from your Lord at all times so you should not commit the haram or sin due to shyness of Allah not because of the people do the shyness of, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah sees you all times and nothing is hidden from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fil ard wa la fil sama. Allah azza wa says nothing indeed Allah azza wa jalla nothing is hidden from him in the heavens and the earth. Abu al-Atahiyah rahmatullah alayhi from the poets great poets of uh, Abbasid Khilafat used to say, إذا ما خلوت الدهر يوما فلا تقل خلوت ولكن قل علي رقيب 
ولا تحسبن الله يغفل ما مضى ولا أن ما يخفى عليه يغيب. So to say, if ever one day you are alone, do not say I am alone. Rather say, عليه رقيب. There is a watcher over me. Allah Azza wa Jal is watching me. ولا تحسبن الله يغفل ما مضى. Don't think. Don't ever think that Allah Azza wa Jal will leave it unaccounted. And Allah will be unaware, is unaware. Astaghfirullah. So I don't think that Allah will leave it uh, unpunished or something. That whatever, that what you, you, you passed, meaning that whatever sins that you have done in the past. And that anything which is hidden, don't think that anything which is hidden to the people is hidden for Allah Azza wa Jal. Because Allah Azza wa Jal, He watches everything and can see everything. From the shyness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to protect your senses and limbs. So the person must protect his stomach by not putting anything haram and impermissible in it. You have heard the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa beautiful hadith from the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These, these hadith need to be studied in universities. That's how beautifully the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa described and really our principles for the whole, not all Muslim ummah, for the whole humanity. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَكِنَّ الْإِسْتِحْيَاءَ مِنَ اللَّهِ حق الحياء حياء أن تحفظ الرأس وما وعاء وتحفظ البطن وما حواء وتتذكر الموت والبلا ومن أراد الآخرة ترك زينة الدنيا في رواية ومن أراد تر الآخرة ترك زينة الدنيا ذلك من فعل ذلك فقد استحي من الله حق الحياء. In this hadith, the Sheikh brought part of it. There's a longer version that the Prophet وسلم, he told them in the longer version, told them, fear, be shy, be shy from Allah, the real way to be shy from Him. The Sahaba they said, Ya Rasulullah, we, we, we fear Allah. They didn't say we we are really fearing, we, we are shy from Allah. Yani that what, what you're saying that really being shy from Allah Azza, we are. We know we, we, we have istihya and we have haya and we have shy, shyness from Allah. But the Prophet explained, said, indeed, shyness from Allah in its true sense, yani haqq al haya, is number one, to protect your head and what it contains. Two, to protect your stomach and what it includes. Three, and to reflect upon death and the trial after death. And number four, and whoever desires the afterlife, the hereafter, let him avoid the glitter of this worldly life. Zinat al dunya. Whoever does, does this, indeed he has been shy from Allah in its true sense, in its reality. So look how the Prophet described, if, are you really shy from Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He mentioned here, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that really to be shy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to protect your head and what it contains. What does it mean that? To protect your head. This head that Allah Azza has given to you, don't bow it down except to him. And don't raise it up and lift it up because you are arrogant to the people showing up. No. Protect this head. Protect what it contains. Your eyesight. Your ear, hearing. Your, your tongue, your mouth. Don't put anything which is haram. Don't speak anything which is haram. Don't see anything which is haram and Allah prohibited. Don't hear anything which is haram. Your brain, don't pollute it with something which Allah Azza has prohibited. Like bad and evil ideas. Don't pollute it. Everything. This is the head. The head is like one of the most important things. You have the brain and everything. Then you go down. The Prophet said, the whole body. Then the stomach. Protect the stomach and whatever, what includes. Obviously, stomach, don't, don't put in your stomach, or the, your mouth and the stomach, things which is not prohibited, and is not uh, allowed for you in Islam. And eating haram, for example. Anything which is included, this part of the body, 
in there that you have your your arms uh, that uh, do use it for the for the sake of Allah as well not use it for haram and everything which is included in that to reflect then the Prophet also mentions that the whole body use it for the sake of Allah as well for things that Allah wants and commanded you to do and don't use it for things that Allah as well he prohibited you to use that for to reflect upon death and the trial to reflect upon death thinking that when they each one of us is going to pass away from this world life and then it starts our journey on the afterlife and the trial and bila and bila it's used for death too but al bila meaning that this is the trial al bala a trial after death you know you start plus obviously in the beginning you're going to be turned into dust nothing as you were Everything you think that, mashallah, you are uh, now you're young, you have your youth, and you have your health and everything. How many days, let's say, month, or how many months, if you become nothing? Rami, your bones, nothing, ashes. This is how you become. So remember that. That's a reminder. The last advice the Prophet gave in this hadith and whoever desires the hereafter, the afterlife, let him avoid the glitter of this world life. The love for this dunya and hereafter cannot be combined together in, in the heart of the believer. Obviously, you live in this world life. Do not forget your, your portion of this dunya. But the, the believer, he gives preference to hereafter because he knows that is the akhirah is better and everlasting than this. How many years are you going to live? You're going to leave it behind, but you're going to leave it hereafter. Also included in this is to be shy from the people by avoiding evil interactions with them. So be shy from Allah and be shy from the people by avoiding evil interactions with them and avoiding having evil character with them. And all of this is included in shyness in general. Then the Shaykh mentioned the other character of the believer, as shaja courage, bravery. Courage in its proper place is strength and success. But in its improper place, not in the right spot, it is recklessness and destruction. The courage of the believer stems from his faith and putting his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reliance upon his Lord and his strong trust in his master and creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why he only fears he is in awe of and seeks strength only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaksha Allah azza, azza wa jal. Ibn Qayyim rahmatullah, he said, courage leads the person to inner strength, is the tunnes, altruism, giving preference to others, giving preference to lofty, high character, disposition. It leads them to generosity. So they are able to give away that which they love. They are courage, courageous people. It allows them to restrain their anger and have forbearance. For surely from the signs of a strong and courageous soul is restraining anger. As the Prophet said, The strong man is not the good wrestler. Rather, the strong man is the one who controls himself when he is angry. That's a real man, a strong one. This is the reality of courage. It is the restraint of the person who has the ability to take action against his opponent, but your friends instead. That's the Prophet وسلم, when he entered in Mecca and forgave all of them. They were the one who persecuted him. They were the one who fought him. They were the one who tortured his ashab. But he forgave him. He said, You are friends. That tells you forbearing and forbearance and courage. Then the Sheikh mentioned the other uh, quality of a believer, al karam generosity. Generosity or karam means uh, karam means generosity and nobility, which includes spending wealth from generosity, or also includes noble manners in general. What is generosity towards your Muslim brother? is to interact with him with noble manners or nobility and to extend your hand to help him. 
different ways. It doesn't mean with money only. Indeed, in generosity, is spending wealth and open-handedness. Allah Azza says, وَمَن يُوقَ شُحْحَ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَيْكَ وَالْفِحُونَ or what were saved from his own covetousness. And uh, they then they are the successful ones. Success lies in generosity and destruction lies in stinginess. Then the Shaykh mentioned another quality trait of a believer. He said, and wafa, fulfilling the trust. Fulfilling the trust. This means adhering to the covenants, contracts, and the like. Allah says, Fulfill your obligations. Doesn't matter if these obligations are toward Allah. Doesn't matter if they are towards the creation. Be those that creation, the Muslim or not Muslim. You have to fulfill their obligation. You wrote a contract or you agreed upon something. That's it. You have to fulfill the obligation. So this is to fulfill what you have been entrusted with and your contracts with the people. Including this is the marriage contract. The contracts on buying and selling and all the interactions between the Muslims and their brothers, and obviously even, even non-Muslims. The Shaykh then mentioned, staying away from everything Allah has prohibited. That's another character or quality of a believer. This is for the person to stay away and avoid the haram due to the taqwa and righteousness. He stays away only from the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fearing his anger and his punishment. The Muslims or a Muslim avoid and the prohibited actions and blame worthy character and he avoid, avoids evil interactions. He does not mix with the corrupt and evil people in order to preserve his religion and safeguard his character. Preserve your religion and safeguard your character. So don't mix with that. Then the Shaykh mentioned Hasnul <clears throat> Jiwa, being a good neighbor. This also from a great Islamic character, which is commanded by the legislation. Such as the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ma zala Jibril yusini bil jai hatta zanantu anhu siyawrithu." Jibril impressed upon me the kind treatment, and he used to give me advice: treat your good, your neighbors good, treat your neighbors good towards the neighbors so much that I thought he could soon confer upon him the right of inheritance. I thought that you will make the neighbor. A part of the hairs to, to get to get inheritance from me because it's like a, my relative, even if he's only a neighbor. So much rights of the neighbors upon their neighbors in Islam. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, Wallahi la yu'min, three times, swearing, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qila wa man ya Rasulullah, qala alladhi la yu'min jahu bawaiqa. It's just it's scary. He said, by Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. By Allah, he doesn't believe. He doesn't believe. He was said, who is that? And Rasulullah, that's the Sahaba, they, they were scared. Well, what is this? Who is that man? So evil. He said, the person, that person whose neighbor does not feel safe from his evil. The Muslim must be far away from harming his neighbor with anything, be that statements or actions. From being a good neighbor is to interact with them in the best manner, to preserve their rights and to obey Allah and his messenger in what has been commanded. Even you have your neighbor next to you and you raise the, the sound, for example, TV or whatever, even if you're listening to Quran, for example. The Quran is, is good, but maybe he, he doesn't want that, especially if it's not Muslim in it. In there. And it's for you, alhamdulillah, it's, it's, it, it's good. Unless he, he told him that it's, it's okay, you can raise so the jinn shall thing go away. And no problem for that if, if he allows you, but you're just okay. Oh, I, I'm gonna put the Quran high so they can listen. Maybe they, you, you are, you're hurting him and, and harming him. So be a good neighbor. And if we really were good neighbors, for sure, a lot of non Muslims would become Muslims just by showing us that, that how the Islam teaches us to be a good neighbor to them. So to have the best manner to preserve their rights and to obey Allah and his messenger in what has been commanded. Then the Shaykh mentioned, helping those in need as much as you are able. Those in need as much as you are able. This is based on the ability of the person. Prophet said, مَن نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الْيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُقْسِرٍ 
يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر مسلما ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون العبد ما كان العبد في عون أخي beautiful hadith tells us the obligation towards other Muslim brothers any time and anywhere as nowadays for example if anyone relieves a believer from one of the hardships of the, his this worldly life any hardship be that monetary be that just by counseling him comforting him or anything that you can your your help with Allah will relieve him one of the hardships of the day of resurrection when you need more. If anyone makes it easy for the one who is indebted to him while finding it difficult to repay, person is in debt to you, Allah will make it easy for him in this worldly life and hereafter. And if anyone conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah will conceal his fault in his world and hereafter. Double. Allah helps his slave as long as he helps his brother. That is tariq al tariq al najat. That is a path. Of salvation. The Prophet Sassam just, Wallahi, as I said before, if these hadith of the Prophet Sassam were to be studied in Jamia, not Muslim, uh, in Muslim universities, non Muslim universities, in non Muslim countries, for example, because Muslim universities are, are, are studied. SubhanAllah, like then the world needs to hear these words. The world would be much better. The world nowadays, they have no shame. They have no, a lot of them, humanity left. What the Prophet has been teaching us to have, to have humanity, to have that help of the needy people, person who has need to fulfill these needs. Then the Shaykh, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, and other than that, I conclude with that, from the prescribed manners shown in the book and the sunnah, Quran, uh, Quran and Sunnah, and there are many. The Shaykh only mentioned some of the great manners the Muslim should adorn with himself well, and there are others he did not mention. The scholars have written specific books about manners. From the con most concise books is Adab al Mufrad, Imam al Bukhari, the author of Sahih al Bukhari. It's a great book on this subject as it gathers texts, proofs, and narrations from the pious predecessors, may Allah have mercy upon them. That's a, a book that Imam Bukhari, that's why they call it Adab al Mufrad, because it's not included in the Sahih Bukhari. It's outside, they put it Mufrad, which is like uh, by itself, uh, because it's not, because Bukhari has another book inside Sahih Bukhari, which is called Adab al, al Kitab al Adab. But they added the word al Mufrad, which is meaning it's not a part of Sahih Bukhari. He wrote it now outside that, and not, not and not everything in it. He didn't put the same conditions as he put Sahih Bukhari. So we, we, you might find, for example, hadith which is not Sahih in the in this book. Alhamdulillah, scholars have explained that and have explained which, which hadith is authentic or not. But it's a very beautiful book uh, in this subject. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us al akhlaq al hasana. Al-Khuluq Al-Hasan, the, the beautiful character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us his pleasure in this dunya and hereafter. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, tabit qulubana ala deenik, wa ya musatif al-qulub, sarif qulub al-ataatik. Allahumma ansur ikhwana al-mustada'afina fi Gaza wa Filistin, wa fi kulli mekani dhukhir al-sunna kareem. Allahumma anji ibadaka al-mustada'afina min al-zalimin al-sahayana ya Rabb al-alamin. Allahumma kullahum wa la tikun alayhim, wa ansurhum wa la tansur alayhim. اللهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم دمر أعداءهم اللهم دمر أعداءهم اللهم دمر أعداءهم اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يؤجزونك اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يؤجزونك اللهم عليك بهم فإنهم لا يؤجزونك صلى الله على نبينا محمد صلى الله أجمعين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شلون لا لا أنت استغفرك وتوبلك سبحانك